This is episode 16 of Plant with Coach, and today we're going to talk about what's your breaking point. And we're seeing a little bit with uh, kind of the trend in the fitness industry is to just be going like balls to the wall all the time, kill yourself, leave the workout kind of leaving you you dead. If you're not puking or you're not in beast mode the whole time, it's just it's not it's not a good workout or, or anything like that. And we're going to talk a little bit about how that is kind of a recipe for for failure and for disaster a little bit. So our beer today, um, oh, about two weeks ago, some of you know, um, myself, Kevin, and Tammy, we were out at Perform Better in uh, Chicago, and um, while we were out there, of course, we hit up a few breweries, and one of the breweries that was right down from the convention center was um, called Short Fuse Brewing, and um, it was a nice little brewery. They had uh, a lot of good beers, a lot of different beers um, on tap. One that, that I found really interesting was a, a um, old German ale, and it was brewed by heating up or superheating stones, basically, and then using the stones to heat the water in the brew kettle. But um, they didn't have any of that in cans to, uh, to bring home. So I ended up getting, it's called a B23. It's a double India IPA. Um, it's made with um, three different hops. It a, a, um, has the hops added to the brew uh, process three times. And then it also has a little bit of honey added to it. So it's a it's about 8%. It's, so it's pretty high beer, but it's one of those beers that could be a little bit dangerous because it doesn't quite um, taste like it's super high um, or have that high alcohol bite. There's a little bit more of a, a malty backbone to it and the honey kind of balances it out a little bit. So it's a, it's a very good beer, but again, it's one that you're gonna maybe have one or two uh, beers instead of a whole afternoon of them. So we're gonna talk about people's breaking points and everybody has one but everyone's point is a little bit different and a lot of it will depend on their lifestyle but before we start talking about workouts the thing that we really need to talk about is recovery because how well a person is able to recover how much time they put into recovery habits is going to determine the the amount of workout that they can do um, in a week it'll also determine the intensity that they can go with People that can recover fast um, and have a, a lifestyle that kind of is conducive to that, they're able to, to do more, they're able to work a little bit harder. Um, but people that have high stress lives, they you know, aren't always able to get seven, eight hours of sleep, they've got kids, they've got spouses, and different things like that that just, just cause stress, just create chaos in their lives. Um, that, that stressful, chaotic life just doesn't do well with trying to work out every day and, and kill yourself every day. So we're gonna talk about kind of how we determine and how we find the right, the right dose that is effective for most people and how they, um, they can get the most out of their workouts. So at some point, we will all break and our bodies will all break if we're not smart about it. So n there's nobody that can, can get away with working out every day, crushing themselves day in, day out, and and do that year in and, and year out if they don't have good recovery. So, you know, right now we've got this whole Instagram world where it's everybody showing their like awesome workouts that are like beast mode, no days off, all that other hashtag bullshit. Um, all that stuff's kind of giving people a false idea of what fitness is really about. You know, it's, there are times where we want to go hard and there's times where we need to, to back off and some days are going to be harder than others some days are going to be easier than others and certain parts of your workout are going to be harder um, and more challenging than others so it's, it's a balancing act of all that you know if if your whole workout's beast mode it's it's not beast mode because you're not beast mode the whole time so you're just kind of doing whatever so that, that's kind of a, like a false belief, but we see that hashtag thrown around a lot. Um, we also see, you know, hashtag no days off and, and some of that, but you know, people have days off. And it's not to say that you can't work out every day. Um, if you do, we need to have the lifestyle, we need to have some of these recovery habits in, in place to allow us to get away with that. So what we see that, that in a typical workout that works really well is we have one or two movements that we want to push it on and the rest of the stuff we're going to back off but again at the end of that workout we should still feel like we have energy to go on with our day to go and, and do things and live our lives go to our jobs take care of our, our kids our spouses you know whatever we need to, to do throughout the day 
um, if our workout just kicks our ass so so bad that we you know want to just die and lay on the floor we have to go home and, and take a nap and we're not like fired up to go what that's going to do is it's going to wear our body down um, and over time we're going to we're going to get hurt we're going to have something that breaks so all the all this like high intensity over time what it does is it starts to create little like I'm gonna call them hot spots in the body. These could be also known as like trigger points, adhesions, whatever, but they're just little spots of like metabolic garbage that gets built up, um, creates some tightness, things like that. And this leads to to basically compromised movement because now we have this, this tightness, we have this stickiness, or the tissues aren't sliding as well across each other, and we start compromising with that. We all have this going on a little bit. But what'll happen, the, the more this goes on, the, the worse these get, we start to move a little bit different. Our posture changes a little bit. Now, what ends up happening is we end up with this new movement pattern that then leads to some type of movement deficiency, which leads to an injury down the road. So we need to have a little bit of uh, backing off uh, in, our, in our workouts from workout to workout and also within the same workout. We have some things we push, we have some things we, we, we back off on a little bit. Um, part of this can be achieved by just taking a little longer rest periods in your workout to let that your body recover, let the, you know, the cells and everything get back to kind of a, a baseline level there. Another thing that happens when we have very, very intense workouts um, day in, day out with you know, no rest periods in between, no days off, we start creating a lot of cellular damage. And this cellular damage, when, when this happens, it's, it's a, the intensity is a stress on the body. We end up creating free radicals, we create oxidation in the body. These are all things that are, are bad for, for our body. And if we don't allow time for that stuff to be cleaned up, what we do is we end up with all this oxidation constantly going on, all these free radicals being, being released. And basically, we start aging the body and aging ourselves. So now, we're doing something that is intended to be healthy for us, and we're actually taking it to, to the other extreme where we're, we're aging our bodies, we're wearing the tissues down, we're wearing our joints down. And you know, you may be in your, your 40s or 50s, but you may have some joint problems that we really shouldn't see till like 60s or 70s. Um, all because of how you chose to work out. So these are things that can be prevented, um, and it's you know it's frustrating when you see people that just you know want to go hard all the time, but they don't ever back up, back off because you know um, we know what's going to happen down the road. So what determines um, how much your body can tolerate, how hard you can go, and how often? The the biggest thing is that it's going to come down to the first thing is genetics. Some people are just freaks, and they can do, you know, they can kind of be balls to the wall all the time, they can be in the gym every day, and their body does well with that. They, they don't break things down, they're, they heal well, they don't have a lot of injuries, they, they just, they do well with that. It's a very small percentage of the population. Um, these people are definitely the outliers, um, but these end up being a lot of the people that the general population tries to um, emulate and wants to, to be like. And um, this is where, where they can get led astray. They're like, oh, these people are in really good shape, they look great, blah, blah, blah. But the downside is, is they don't realize that, that those people are outliers. Um, there may be three, four percent of the population. And, and they get away with it, their bodies tolerate it well. The other thing that is going to determine frequency is how much sleep you get and the quality of your sleep. So if you're somebody that is getting eight, nine hours of, of sleep each night and it's good sleep, yeah, you're, you're going to be able to work out a lot. Um, you're going to be able to work out pretty hard. You know, if you're a person that's getting five, six hours, you're not going to be able to work out too much. And if, if you do, you're going to feel pretty crappy. And you're also, you know, running a higher risk of, of getting hurt. There's also the person that, you know, they may be in bed seven, eight, you know, nine hours, but their sleep's just awful. They toss and turn, they wake up at, you know, two, three in the morning, they've got to go to the bathroom three, four times throughout the night. They, they, their, their sleep's just awful. Those people too aren't going to tolerate as much. So sleep quality um, is going to play a big, a big part in that. And, you know, if we're pushing somewhere between seven, nine hours, um, and we've got good, good quality, good restful sleep. We're good, again, we're going to be able to do more. We're going to be able to push a little bit harder, and, and our bodies will, will tolerate that. 
the next thing is going to determine is how much you sit. So you take a person that is at a desk for eight, nine hours a day. They've got a 30 to 60 minute commute where they're you know sitting in their car, sitting on the bus, train, whatever. And they're spending right there is half their day is sitting, just sitting. Um, when they go home, it's probably more sitting. So somebody that sits a lot, again, their body has a, basically a different posture. We typically see with the pelvis turned under, we should see the shoulders rolled forward. So there's a lot of other, there's a lot of tissue stuff going on there that's not perfect that, um, again, when we start trying to throw a ton of exercise on that, when I say a ton, really more than like three days a week, um, we can create some injuries. We can start getting into back issues. We can start getting into you know shoulder issues. Those are probably the two most common. Um, so again, sitting will determine that and the amount that you do throughout the day. The other thing is how much recovery work you do. So, you know, and when I say recovery work, this is stuff like foam rolling. Do you foam roll before your workouts? Do you foam roll after your workouts? How much time do you spend doing like deep breathing, meditation things? Um, you know, if you spend a few minutes each morning doing something like that, that's that's a positive. It's going to help your body recover. Do you foam roll before you go to bed? Do you stretch out before you go to bed? Um, some of those little things, again, help your body recover, and you're going to be able to, to work out more. Um, we also have things like ice baths. We've got the cryotherapy. Um, you know, there's some of the infrared, like saunas and things like that. So all, all of that stuff, if, if you're doing some of that stuff in addition to your training, um, you're going to be able to, to work out more work and work out a little bit harder. I guess I should throw in there too, massage therapy. That's really, really good. Um, you know, if everyone's getting a massage once a week, most aren't. But um, again, that's something that's going to allow you to, to do a little bit more. The other thing too is our age and fitness level. So obviously, um, like all things, most things in life, you know, younger people recover faster and they can, you know, put out more effort and stuff like that and, and, and just recover well from it. As we get older, our bodies don't recover quite as well. Um, I also throw a fitness level in there because what we'll see when we have a beginner and they start working out, they can pretty much go, you know, four or five days a week with no problem because their body isn't super strong yet so everything they're doing is kind of lighter weights it's all sub maximal but as they get more advanced they get stronger they get in better shape they're able to lift heavier weight which is is a good thing but what happens that heavier weight now stresses the tissues more it creates more damage to the muscle um, tissue and it just takes a little bit longer to recover from that so we as we get fitter, we actually usually need to cut um, frequency back a little bit to handle the, the hot, heavier loads um, and let our, so our tissues and our joints and tendons and ligaments can handle that without getting pulls and aches and pains and things like that. Along with that, I also should, should throw in um, training age. So training age is basically how, how many years you've actually been training hard. So you may have somebody that is like in their mid thirties, but has been working out for 20 years, pretty, pretty consistently, pretty um, focused, I guess. You've got a 20 year training age on, on that body where you could have a person that's in like their mid forties, early fifties, but they've only been really seriously working out for about five years. The person that is, that, that mid thirties person has a much older training age on them They've got a little bit more um, damage, a little bit more beat upness um, to their body. So again, they tend to need a little bit more time to recover. They need to spend more time on recovery techniques, more time on um, like mobility work, things like that. So again, with with your with workouts, and again, as we, we our goal is to have everybody working out as they they age and throughout life. But again, every year that we work out consistently, we add another year to our training age. So that just means we need to foam roll a little bit more. We probably need to be getting our massages. We need to, you know, if we have things that, that are kind of chronic um, aches and pains, or say we've got like a bad ankle, bad shoulder, we probably should be icing those things after our workouts um, and doing some corrective work to try to keep those things from flaring up and, and so that they're not issues. Um, we also have to look at nutrition. If our nutrition is bad, 
again, that's going to affect our recovery. So if we eat, the better we eat, the better we recover, the more um, nutrients we have coming in, and we're just able to, you know, to, to do more, to handle more, and, and push a little bit harder in our workouts. And the last thing is our stress level. So if we take a highly stressed person, and I don't care what their stress is from, um, and we throw a ton of exercise on them, we're gonna break their body down, and their body's gonna break down pretty quick. So we, that person, we need to do less workouts. Um, most of our highly stressed uh, life people tend to do well with two to three workouts a week um, and a few like walks or daily walk in there. Um, they tend to do best with that. Their bodies tend to feel well with that, and that allows them to, to keep doing it. Because again, this whole fitness thing isn't about just this short sprint to three months from now before a cruise or I got to get into this dress or in the beach or, or whatever. This, the whole fitness thing is about a lifetime of, of staying fit, living healthy, and, and just doing the things that, that we enjoy. Like I said earlier, the biggest, the biggest point I'm trying, trying to get across here is that this whole idea of going hard day in and day out um, is going to set you up for failure. So we need to have some back off days, we need to have some back off um, like sets or whatever within our workouts, just to keep our body feeling good. And um, you know, if you feel yourself getting getting weaker, getting more aches and pains, not sleeping well, um, some days you just feel it's a feeling like your feet are just in sand, things like that. If if you feel that stuff, you feel not quite normal. Um, it, it could be a sign that we just need to take you know take a day off. We need to just go have a couple light workouts, things like that. So again, listen to your body; it'll tell you what you need. So so that was this week's episode. Um, Again, the beer we had was from a little brewery out in Chicago, and um, we said all the beers were really good out there. So, talk to you next week.